Now the weekend preview brought to you by Three Chimneys. We'll take a look at some of the stakes action going around this weekend. And then after that, we'll come back and take a look at the field now of the pre-entered horses for the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Uh, kind of a quiet weekend, as you would expect. But Zoe, I want to start with you because it's not a quiet weekend at Santa Anita. There's something going on in terms of what's going to happen on the racetrack. And also something going on. Maybe someone can walk away with a million bucks. Tell us more. Yeah. Absolutely, Bill. While the rest of the country is sleeping and perhaps looking forward to Breeders' Cup, we're going to have our own mini Breeders' Cup this weekend at Santa Anita. They'll be drawing the races today for Saturday, and we're expecting seven stakes worth in excess of $1 million, highlighted by a couple of grade two events. Uh, we are talking about the Gold Cova coming in here and a couple of others that Twilight Derby's worth 200,000, seven stakes, and that's all going to evolve around the pick six. Now, a lot of times we have a single ticket winner. Now, this weekend, if there is a single ticket winner, listen to this, Randy. Um, mm -hmm. First racing is going to give up a million dollars. If you are the only ticket winner in the pick six, you will get a bonus of a million dollars. The carryover going into Saturday's pick six is 143,000. So a million reasons to play the pick six at Santa Anita and seven terrific stakes on the card. And looks like we'll see going global in the Golda Cova stakes. She's going to face Avenue de France. She was originally slated to perhaps go to the Breeders' Cup, but Phil D'Amato keeping her home and she will most certainly be a single, I do believe, on a lot of people's tickets. She'll be in the grade two Golda Cova. So at Keeneland, we've got the Fayette and the Bryan Station on Saturday. Fayette is kind of, uh, you know, the conditions might be for really good horses that aren't quite good enough to run in the Breeders' Cup Classic. But you do have first captain in there. He was third in the Jockey Club Gold Cup, won the Pimico Special earlier in the year. And for those of us who like Tyler's Tribe, go Iowa Breds. How about Ain't Life Grand, the winner of the Iowa Derby? Last time out, seventh in the Traverse. He'll be in there as well as King Fury. Brian Station, Classic Causeway, who won the Belmont Derby in June of Grade 1, will face off against, among others, Witt, who won the Better Talk Now Stakes last time out, or Todd Pletcher, and Val Cove, who's shipping in from your neck of the woods, Zoe, from California. Uh, Aqueduct will have the Kelso and the Bold Ruler on Saturday. Uh, Kelso has an interesting horse. Now, I hate to say this because we're talking about it before the entries come out, so Steve Asmussen, please run this horse. But how about Morello? Remember him? He won the Gotham and looked like he was going to be a major player along the way. Then he ran a, a clunker in the Wood Memorial, came back and run another clunker in the Woody Stevens. But Steve Asmussen brought him back a couple of weeks ago. He won an allowance race at, uh, at Laurel, of all places, to prep for this race. And uh, the Kelso, no longer a prep for the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile, used to be. Remember, Life is, is Good won the – didn't Life is Good win the Kelso – yeah, um, which was it was situated as a prep for the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. Obviously, one week before the Breeders' Cup, nobody's going to come out of that and run in there. But it should be a really interesting weekend of racing at Keeneland, Belmont, and Aqueduct, and especially at Santa Anita with those seven stakes races. Uh, you know, a smart move by Santa Anita to, to you know, in a, in a day, Zoe, when not much is going on around the country, they're going to steal the show, I think. Yeah, I mean, they really are. And I think the bonus of a million dollars on top of the pick six, mm -hmm. if you're the only winner, is certainly a big key because a lot of times we just had it a couple of weeks ago where it's the jackpot and it's like a regular pick six, but this is a single ticket winner with a chance of winning a million dollars. And it's going to be a really, really good card. A lot of turf racing. You'll find more and more over here on the left coast that we're utilizing our turf course an awful lot. Probably 60% of the races are now on turf because we have so many turf courses to choose from. So good races. Full fields, and that is what we're hoping for. And of course, it's going to be sunny. It doesn't rain that out here. Bonus, that million dollars yeah. certainly captured my attention, Zoe. That's yeah, yes. absolutely right. The TD and Riders Room and the weekend preview is brought to you by Three Chimneys. Of course, Three Chimneys, the home of Gun Runner. We talked about Wicked Halo and Gunite winning for Steve Asperson at Keeneland, both. Uh, the son and a daughter of Gun Runner, and of course, Gun Runner off to an amazing start in his first crop. You're looking at early voting, the Preakness winner, Echo Zulu, the champion two year old filly, Cyber Knife, winner of the Arkansas Derby and the Haskell, Taba, winner of the Santa Anita Derby and the Pennsylvania Derby. Three of those will be competing in the Breeders' Cup next weekend as well. We'll be right back for part two of the weekend preview after this message from Three Chimneys. 
comes Tama. Tama in the center of the track with good looking stride. Squares off with Cyberknife. Cyberknife takes the lead. Tama going with him. These two in a thriller. Cyberknife just in front. And Cyberknife has won the TVG.com Haskell over Tama. Jack Christopher finished third. The running time, one minute 46. 0.24 seconds. Come, dream with us at Three Chimneys. And welcome back to the weekend preview. We're going to do something a little bit different here. And we've been, I've been making Randy Moss do double duty. Now he's on the podcast, but he's our official morning line maker for the Breeders' Cup. We've, we've gotten his line for the classic. We got his line for the distaff. This week, I want to get his line for what I think is an, another one of the really outstanding races on the Breeders' Cup card. Randy, you made a line for the Breeders' Cup juvenile. No surprise here, Cave Rock at even money. Is he the biggest favorite on the card next to uh, next to flight line? He's got to be, right? I would I would think so. With Jack Christopher running against Jackie's Warrior, uh, he's going to take a lot of play in there. Um, you know, Modern Games has got some competition in the mile. So, yeah, I, I think that's probably a pretty accurate statement. I could have gone as low as four to five on Cave Rock, and I thought about it. Uh, but ultimately, the points balanced out better at even money because I think National Treasure, Forte, Blazing Sevens are all going to get some play. I wouldn't be surprised, even though I've got Forte as a slight second choice. I wouldn't be surprised to see National Treasure be the second choice. The speed figure guys, I think, are going to have him with a slightly higher number than Forte. But Forte has that grade one win in the Breeders' Futurity, whereas National Treasure is still looking for his first stakes win. But those four should be significantly higher than verifying uh, the well-bred horse by a son of Justify trained by Brad Cox. And then you have the rest of them that are going to be a pretty big price after that. But Cave Rock, Zoe, is a very exciting horse to look forward to. Uh, I know you've been uh, pleased and you've been impressed by the way he's been training out there for Bob Baffert. And he's certainly done nothing wrong in his races so far. He's a very relaxed horse. I actually swung by Bob's barn yesterday and, you know, Bob was in a jovial mood and I'm like, come on, let me, let me go see Cave Rock. And he's like, oh. And then, of course, he took me you know, usually your best horse is in the front stall by your office, right? No, we're in the back 40. We went all the way around to the other end of the barn. Down at the end, he's got a nice window. And he was flat out in his stall, just flat out, not a bother on him. Two doors down, they were actually clipping uh, Bob's other horse in the juvenile. So he was outside, the clippers were going and they were clipping him. But yeah, Cave Rock had his head out the door and just flat out. So we got a good look at him. Got a good look at National Treasure, who's a big, tall, growthy looking horse. Uh, reading between the lines, if it wasn't for the ownership group that he has, I don't, I'm not sure he would be going to the Breeders' Cup. He looks like a horse who's in a growing spurt. I have no doubt he's a very, very good horse, but he just looks like he's growing right now. And next year is probably going to be where he makes a lot of the hay next year. I think he's going to be a much better horse next year. We're just seeing the raw bones but Cave Rock is just a, a bulky tank. Yes, he moves like Arrogate on the racetrack. He's got that low head carriage and he just skips along the ground, but he's got a lot more substance. He looks much more like a three-year-old than Arrogate ever did in his two-year-old year. So I got a good look at him. And then Bob like pulled me around the other side of the barn. He's like, come on, come on, come and have a look at Tabor. You know, I went and had a good look at Gunrunner. And he's like, it's amazing how much he looks just like Gunrunner. We went in the stall and he's like, I, I love him like right here, the barrel bit. And he's getting a little bit higher in his withers. And he is a compact horse, Tabor. But he again has hit a bit of a growth spurt. And he really does look terrific going in there. And I mean, make no bones about it. If everything goes well for flight line, the rest of them are running for second. But, you know, they still all got to cross the wire first. So we'll have to see. But Bob was very excited. It was it was kind of cool just to walk around Murderer's Row in the Baffert Shed Row. Mm. Now, a horse that wasn't entered and we knew this was going to be the case. No Loggins, who was so impressive when running second in the Breeders' Futurity at Keeneland. I, I would have given him the best chance to beat. Um, Cave Rock, even though he got beat by Forte in that race at Keeneland, he had a difficult trip. He fought gallantly the wire, came back on that horse. But Brad Cox said, 
you know, look, I, I really want to win the Kentucky Derby here with this horse. It would be for him to come back in the Breeders' Cup would have been three races in seven weeks. He admitted that the horse came out of the Breeders' Futurity at Keeneland kind of tired, didn't bounce back out of the race like he, he wanted to. He said if he was tearing the barn door down, I would have entered him. But Randy, um, where does Loggins fit into this? And are we going to see a uh, East Coast, West Coast rivalry of Cave Rock and Loggins on the way to the Kentucky Derby? I mean, a million things can go wrong to derail that. But right now, I think they're the, t- the top two two-year-olds out there. I mean, it could it also be an East Coast, West Coast rivalry between Cave Rock and Forte. Let's see how Forte runs right. in the Breeders' Cup. I mean, he's done nothing wrong so far. But I think, and they ran against each other, obviously, in the Breeders' Futurity. And you and I both, and Zoe probably as well, came out of that race thinking that Loggins long term would probably be the better horse, given his inexperience going into that race, given the trip that he had, a very, very fast pace, and he was on the engine all the way. And yet he was still fighting back gallantly through the lane while all the other horses that were close to the pace finished way, way back in the pack. Uh, I'm excited about Loggins' chances uh, as a three-year-old. I know Brad Cox is as well. I talked to him also. Um, And I think it's the right decision not to run him in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile uh, for all the reasons that you cited. But looking ahead, I think he is a horse we can get excited about. I think it's actually refreshing to see a trainer trying to do the right thing by the horse. Now, we don't exactly know how he came out of the race, but I mean, that's Brad's story and he's sticking to it and he's going to put him away for next year. So kudos to them just to miss the dance and go for the big dance next year. 